Welcome to our Missionary Stories for Children. We're so thankful that you tuned in. We have an exciting lesson for the next few weeks on Corey Ten Boom, a wonderful family that grew up in Holland. And we will see how each member of this family served the Lord faithfully. But in the end, she was taken from her home and put in prison by Adolf Hitler and the awful, terrible times in the 1940s. Well, you would never think that anyone that served the Lord and each member of the family serving the Lord would have to suffer like they did. But you see, God's ways are always right. He's holy in all his works. And this is the thing that we must keep in mind with everything that's happening in our lives, that God is allowing it to happen for our good, to draw us closer to Him, and to teach us faith in Him. And He is still a sovereign God, and every trial and every difficulty that we have, love transcends all human difficulties. And as we see as a child of God, to love is to serve. Every truly believer has a responsibility to serve the Lord. And as we see these lessons, it's so exciting. You know, he says, if you give a drink, a cup of water in my name, we will be reward rewarded by a fair judge not by any person in this world, but by the Lord himself. What do you do for other people? Are you doing anything to get out the word of God? Well, let's see what happened with each member of this family. And let's see what we're to do. And Corey Ten Boom's favorite story was the Good Shepherd. And we're going to be reading that today in Luke chapter 15. Now the Pharisees and the publicans were always trying to cause Jesus trouble. They were religious people, but they were lost. And Jesus Christ gave this parable to them. And the Pharisees said, and the scribes murmured. Murmuring and complaining is never God's will. Never God's will. And they said, this man eateth with sinners and receives sinners. Well, you see, that's the first thing we learn in the book of Luke. This is the Bible verse for the book of Luke. The Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. That is Luke 19.10. Luke 19.10. So let's see what he says about this. And he spake this parable unto them, saying, Now remember, they are self-righteous. They don't see themselves a sinner. And you know, today, people don't want to believe that they are sinners. But God's word says, All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So we have to go by what God's word says, and we're all the same in his sight. So we see verse 4 of Luke chapter 15. What man of you have an hundred sheep? If he lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness, and go after that which is lost until he finds it. And which, when he hath found it, he layeth it on his shoulders, rejoicing. 
And when he cometh home, he calleth together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. And I say unto you, now listen to this. This is so exciting. God's word is the most exciting thing in the world. And he says, likewise, joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth more than the ninety and nine just persons, the religious people, which need no repentance. You see, the person that is religious is lost. First, you have to realize you're lost before you can be saved. And this is what Jesus Christ came to do. Let's pray. Our gracious and dear Heavenly Father, teach us how to better serve Thee. For all the benefits that Thou just thus bestow upon us each day, my God shall supply all of your need according to His riches in glory by Christ Jesus. I can do all things through Christ who strengtheneth me. Help every person to realize today their need of receiving Thee as personal Savior and receiving eternal life. The gift of eternal life must be received. And those of us that are truly Thine, search our hearts today and see if there be any evil way in us and lead us into the paths of righteousness, that we may be vessels fit for the Master's use, and that we would desire to serve Thee. Thank Thee for hearing and answering our prayers. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. So as we come to this lesson, this little girl was born in 1892 in Holland, and she was afraid. Have you ever been afraid? I think we all have at some time in life. She was afraid because she thought she saw an animal in the window. She was sleeping with her sister, Corey, uh, Nolly, uh, her sister, Nolly, and Betsy, and William. She had two sisters and a brother. And Corey was sleeping with her, and she was afraid, and she was holding on to her nightgown. And she says, Corey, please don't hold on to my nightgown. Hold on to the doll's nightgown because I can't even turn over. But she would not for the first night. But then after that, she did. She held on to her doll's nightie. You see, as we are afraid in this world of people, we have fear of people that we can't trust. But the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. That's why we fear the Lord, because we're going to stand before Him someday. But the fear of the Lord is reverence and awe and respect for who He is. He's the Creator. He is our Redeemer. And we need to seek wisdom from Him. You see, wisdom enables me to do what? Discern His perfect will. So this little girl, as she grew up in this home, she had a wonderful family. Her father taught the Word of God every day in the home. She grew up with three aunts in her home because her mother was sick a lot. So Aunt Anna came to care for her mother and to help with the housework. And she loved Aunt Anna. And Aunt Anna said, you cried a lot when you were small, and I had to put you on my back with my apron. And she loved for Aunt Anna to tell her the stories about their family. So her aunt could tell great stories but her mother could also tell a good story. So her mother told her the story about the lost sheep, about the shepherd that went to look. Every day he went with his sheep. That shepherd is the Lord Jesus Christ. Because as we find out the Bible verse, he says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. 
So she knew about this good shepherd. She learned about him every day. So when she was five years old, when she heard this story, that the shepherd would take these sheep out every day to the very best pastor, and he would take them to the fresh water that was still because they could not drink out of water that was running because it would get under their wool. And then he would stay with them all day. And you see the sheep were like the little lambs and the sheep are like we are. You see, we all, look, listen at God's word. All we like sheep have gone astray. We've turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord hath laid our iniquities, his, all of our iniquities, on him. He's laid all of our sins on Christ on the cross. So just like the little story about Snowflake, Snowflake was a beautiful, beautiful white lamb, and she was very mischievous. She didn't want to obey the shepherd, so she would run away. But why did the shepherd have to stay so close? They followed the shepherd, just like after we become a child of God, we follow the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, because there were lions, and these lions wanted to get the little lambs. Just like today, Satan goes about like a roaring lion, seeketh whom he may devour. You see, he thought this little lamb did, that if he ran away, that he could find better grass, he could have more fun, he didn't have to obey his shepherd, and then he got into trouble. And every one of us that don't follow our shepherd, we get into trouble. He found that he was on the rocks and couldn't get down. He began to want to know where his shepherd was. It began to snow. And he was very young. He had never seen snow before. So he fell down into some thorny bushes and couldn't get out. But what did the good shepherd do? He took the 90 and 9 to the fold, like they did every night. Every night, they followed him back home. He left that 90 and 9 and went to look for a little snowflake. And you know what they had to do to those little lambs that disobeyed? They had to break the leg of the lamb. And then he would carry that little lamb all day long close to his heart. And then after that lamb's leg was healed, he was the most obedient one of all the flock. So as we learn these lessons, we see that she learned that lesson, that Jesus Christ was knocking at her door, and she opened her heart and let him in, because he says, I am the door. If any man enter, he shall be saved. So she accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior. She was not afraid anymore. Because she knew that God's word says, I am the vine, ye are the branches. If ye abide in me and I abide in you, the same bringeth forth much fruit, for without me ye can do nothing. Then after she learned not to be afraid, she taught her cousin Dot that they were playing in the church, in the pews, hiding, because her uncle was usher in the church. And they loved to play, and she felt so near to God. But one of the things that bothered her was on Blacksmith Street, down from where she lived, these men drank all the time and got drunk. 
And when they got drunk, they started fighting. She hated fighting. She hated to see these men sin. And she would see one of the things that bothered her the most is the police would have to come and take these men and put them in a jail, a dark jail. And she thought about them in this awful dark place. And she wanted to do something for them. You know what she did? Every night she prayed, Lord, save those people on Blacksmith Street. So as she grew up, she started girls clubs. And as she had girls, they had 40 different adults. After they were older, each one had eight girls as their troop. There were 40 different leaders and they were called the Triangle Clubs. And they had the Triangle Girls were in a circle and they prayed that they would live close to the Lord. And they would invite their relatives and their friends once a year to come to hear them to see what they had learned. So these girls that were in the clubs, they were having camp meetings. And some of them said, we, live, we used to live not too far from where you live on Blacksmith Street. There were so many girls that told her that they used to live on Blacksmith Street. Why did she have those girls in her clubs? Because she started to pray for them when she was very small. And these girls heard about the Lord Jesus Christ. Her prayers were answered. And you see when her father would have at every meal, he thanked God for the food. He prayed for the Queen of Holland and he said, may our Savior come soon in the clouds to take us home, to meet him in the clouds. This was in the 1900s. How much sooner is his coming today? So her mother also, although her mother was very ill, she also helped serve the Lord. She made clothes, knitted clothes for babies. She sent cheery notes to people that were sick and they went to visit the poor when she was able. One day they went to visit the poor. I want you to look at the little baby in the cradle. This family that they went to visit had one room only. They had to do all their eating, their cooking, their washing and everything in this one room. But something happened before they got there to visit this family. They had had a baby, and that baby in that cradle had died. And she had tears in her eyes. She had never seen anything like this before. She had never seen anything like this. She got sick. When she went home, she couldn't come downstairs. She was so worried because she said, father's going to die. Mother's going to die. My three aunts are going to die. And William's going to die. And Nola and Betsy's going to die. And they may die and leave me alone. What would I do? So that night, they had dinner. Her father had a lesson on fearing the Lord. She knew that he was close to her and would comfort her no matter what happened. She knew that the father had taught her that whatever God did was right. So she still couldn't eat anything. She went upstairs and she prayed, oh, 
Heavenly Father, I know that we will all be together in heaven someday, but please don't take my family away from me, that I will be left here all alone. So her father, after they had eaten, went upstairs and he told her that she didn't have to be afraid because God's word says that he will comfort you, he will never leave you, and I want you to listen just about a little story that I can tell you that will help you to see how God works when we have trials and difficulties. He said, when you go on a train, do, you, do I give you money two weeks in advance or do I give you money when you get on the train? She says, why you give me money when I get on the train? Not two weeks before. She said, that's how the Lord does. He will give you the comfort that you need at the time that the trial comes. Now, you're very small right now, and you can't understand all of this, but you will understand that God cares, and He wants the very best for our family. Those words of comfort was all that she needed. She knew that her father was right. You know, maybe you don't have a father that lives with you. Maybe your father is dead, or maybe he is gone to someplace else and lives in another home or another house. You can have a heavenly father. This was what she always knew that her earthly father was like her heavenly father. And she could pray to him about everything. That's how she learned to pray for the people at Blacksmith Street because she saw her father pray and answers prayer. So she knew, and you can know also that your heavenly father is the best friend you will ever have. And not only that, he will never leave you nor forsake you. This is the best news that you can have as a child of God. So after they talked, had the good evening, when time came for her to go to school, she didn't want to go to school. She loved helping Aunt Anna. Aunt Anna peeled potatoes. She would put them in the pan and wash them. She would help her when she, she was cooking. She got to lick all the pans the, when they made a cake or icing. So the day came for her to go to school and she was holding on to the banister and said, I don't want to go to school. I don't want to go to school. I don't want to go to school. Her father said, but you have to go to school because you have to learn to read. But I can read already. But you must learn arithmetic. But you can teach me arithmetic. And then he, she said, I don't want to go to school because I am afraid. I want to stay here because I can help Aunt Anna and play with my doll. But you have to have friends at school. He said, come on. She held on to the banister so tight, but yet his fingers were stronger than hers. And you know, that's how the Lord is. I have all power to say no to Satan and to the evil and corruption of the world. So what did she do? She went to school. He said, I will be back at 12 o'clock and pick you up. He came back and picked her up at 12 o'clock. This happened for three days. After three days, she saw another father carrying his little boy to school and he was just screaming. And she saw, I have been doing the same thing. So then she saw how bad this was for her to act like this. So first of all, we see that she was afraid of death. She was afraid of the animal in the dark. And then she was afraid to go to school. 
Well, her father taught her that she didn't have to be afraid of death because he said, you see, when you breathe your last breath, the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit that dwells in your heart and your soul go to be with the Lord and your body goes back to the grave. You see, that little baby's body was just lying there in that cradle. She was in heaven, her soul, because every baby goes to be with the Lord. They don't have a mind to reject Christ. And that's the only way you go to hell because you say no to God. You say no to his great love and that he desires for you to be in heaven where he is. He said, you don't have to be afraid because we're absent from the body and present with the Lord. So the three things that happened to her, maybe they happened to you. Maybe you're afraid in the dark. Maybe you are afraid to die, or one of your loved ones is going to die. You're afraid maybe they may leave you. But you see, you must learn God's word so you will not be afraid. I will put my trust in the Lord and not fear what man shall do unto me. You see, this little girl grew up just like we did. Every one of us have to grow up. But the greatest thing about this little girl, she grew up trusting the Lord. And we can do the same thing. And when each trial came, she knew that God was preparing her for the ministry that he had for her. Everything that happened was to help her. So she got to go on a train with her father. Her father went to Amsterdam and she got to go with him. He had to go there for parts. And oh, how she loved to get dressed and go with her father and just be alone with him away from the rest of the family. While they were on the train, she saw the poor areas that they passed by. She saw the mansions of the rich people and she saw the beautiful farmland of all the cattle and all of the wonderful things that God created. You know, when you look out your window, And you'll tune in next week and you're going to get so excited over all these things that are happening to this little girl and the life of this wonderful family where each of them served God faithfully. Jesus is the way, the Lord is soon returned.